Hello! Hi everyone! Hello! Hey Sally! Hey Sarah! Hey Rebecca! Oh, Rebecca's here! Amazing! Wow, we're gonna get started ASAP! Hi everyone! Wow, so fun! Hi! Hi there! How are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. Thank you. You know, I don't usually, I don't usually do like evening calls, like night calls, but I'm just like, oh, it's just time with Rebecca. Like I just get to hang out with my friend for a little bit yeah. tonight. So I love it. How is your day going? I know you, you had a full day. Yes, it is National Human Trafficking Awareness Day, so lots of stuff going on. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for making time with us. I know everyone is so excited um, to just hear from you uh, a little bit today, and I'm sure you have lots of requests and pulled in a ton of directions today of all days, so really appreciate your time. Oh, this is great. I'm excited to be with you guys. Awesome. Um, cool. Well, um, if I have not had the pleasure of meeting anyone who's watching, my name is Elizabeth. I'm one of the founders and the chief brand officer at Trades of Hope, and I'm joined here tonight with Rebecca Bender. Rebecca, can you, um, are, do you mind just introducing yourself? You are just frozen for us. Let me just see. I think I can get you back. Here we go. She's rejoining. So, hey, don't know what happened. It just dropped me. That's okay. <laughs> um, do you mind just introducing yourself? Just because I have no idea who all is watching. You know, you've been, I mean, we've been partnered um, with you for years now, but I have no idea who's watching. They could be totally new to you. Can you um, maybe just introduce um, who you are and what you do? Yeah, I'm Rebecca Bender. I'm the CEO and founder of Elevate Academy. We are an online school that helps survivors get job ready. And we are so honored to partner with Trades of Hope over the last several years now um, to be able to bring lots of different things I'm sure we're going to get into to survivors of trafficking that, that are in our school. Um, we have had nearly 1,600 students spanning 600 U.S. cities and 22 countries. Um, so we know that, you know, Trades of Hope is helping so many people and we're so excited to, to be partnered with you guys and all that you do for us. So. That's a little bit about what we do. Oh, well, it's, it's really such our honor, and I'm really excited because I just have to start this whole conversation off by saying directly to everyone watching, you are going to leave this conversation with Rebecca feeling so inspired, so motivated, feeling so equipped to do something. And at Trades Hope, we have several ways for you to um, support their efforts. One really fun way being that starting today through the 15th, through Monday, January 15th, um, $1 for every single order, no matter what you buy at Trades Hope, is going to go back to Elevate Academy. So Aww. I love shopping, and I just feel like when something like that's going on, it's like free shopping. <laughs> that's how I justify it in my head. Um, and um, of course, Rebecca and I are both wearing the new elevate necklace um, yes. which I have been obsessed with wearing the last few days and um, this is a part of our giving necklace collection which means that ten dollars of every single necklace purchase goes back towards elevate so I just want you to know that right away because I know you're gonna want to channel all of your excitement into doing something tangible to support um, Rebecca and her team and 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 their mission so Rebecca can you um, tell us um, how how elevate i know it's like a big story and i know you, you'll have to like condense it in some ways but do you mind just sharing like how elevate academy came to be yes yes well i um for the shortened story you're right i um i was trafficked for nearly six years and when i was able to escape i remember sitting in my government subsidized apartment with my literal craigslist mattress and a kitchen table from goodwill and i can remember just thinking this can't be it like this can't be freedom and I kind of had these feelings of like now what what am I going to do with the rest of my life I'm 
you know, have the same vulnerabilities that led to my exploitation in the first place. And it's compounded with gap in job history, criminal record, huge amounts of PTSD. And I, yeah, I just kept feeling like, now what, now what, now what? And through that experience, I was able to take my story and turn it into a training. And we started training law enforcement on undercover operations and assessing culpability. And as that kind of spread, we began having survivors reach out and ask to be mentored and ask how they could turn their story into purpose. And how did you get contracts? And what, what about their now what? And how did I discover mine? And so at the time I was getting my master's degree online because I lived in a small town where there was no real big universities. And one morning I just had this thought, if I can get a master's online, I could mentor online. And so I wrote a 16 week curriculum, which is about one semester of school. And we just put it out kind of to the survivor communities. And 10 years ago, we started with five. And now to have 1600 survivors have gone through. Now we offer 10 classes, almost 10, I think maybe nine. I'd have to recount right now because we try to add new content every year, just helping people learn who they are, what their gift sets are, um, all different classes, budgeting, finding your specialty, professional development. Um, nonprofit management, social entrepreneurship, just so many ways that we want to help survivors figure out their now what. Mm -hmm. um, and we've seen such a, just such a difference in communities all across the country where survivors sit at tables, whether they're on local task forces or they're, they volunteer at their local shelter, they get a job as a crisis you know, response advocate or a peer mentor. We're just seeing people step in and want to feel like their story matters that everything they lived through wasn't for nothing. And they want to be a part of fighting trafficking in their community and possibly your community, you know, so to just engage survivors to have seats at the table is, is our goal. Yeah. You, a phrase that I've actually learned from you is um, like the concept of, of things being survivor led and you refer to Elevate Academy being survivor led, not only by you, but other people. And can you just talk about, like just for people who might be totally new, define what survivor led means and then why is that so important? Yeah, yeah survivor led organization is, is someone who is a survivor that's leading and founding in a sense, I'm um, not always founding, but leading the organization. Um, we have lots of different nonprofits that exist that are survivor informed or survivor consulted or they have survivors on boards um, but to have a survivor led org really matters because it allows the survivor the projects to be really informed by somebody with lived experience um, and that just helps to ensure that every you know part of what we're doing is trauma centered survivor you know led that we we know firsthand what it's like. We know the barriers to yeah. starting different projects and the barriers that exist for us specifically. And so survivor-led orgs, we really you know encourage people to look into what survivor-led led orgs exist in their communities. Um, because our starting line for starting companies is very different than a lot of other people's you know starting line. And and to be able to come alongside and and encourage and remind them of their strengths and, mm -hmm. and um, know that whatever they're doing is definitely through the lens of lived experience and mm -hmm. all of, again, those barriers to get things yeah. started, um, you know, are very different. So, yeah. so we, in, we encourage um, people to look into survivor led orgs and, and who those are in their neighborhoods. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, I, you, you know, just mentioned, even just like touching on the wildly different experience and perspectives one could have um, I just can't even imagine something like elevate not being survivor led like there are so many people with such good hearts but I just think um, I've just heard the ins and outs of everything that you and other leaders um, walk alongside other survivors through and I just think how can anyone who hasn't been on that journey as well do, do I mean they couldn't they couldn't do it the way that you do it um, and I think a big part of that is, of course, just like normal, like the ability for like a human being able to empathize with, with a situation that they haven't gone through, but also because there are so many misconceptions around human trafficking, um, especially, I mean, I feel like I can really only speak for those of us like in America and the Western world, so many misconceptions. Can you shine a light on some of us on like some of just the, the I'm just gonna say like, 
the most problematic misconceptions that people believe about human trafficking, just so that we're no, we're no longer feeding that and maybe being being more effective. Yeah, yeah there's there's a, there's several myths that are pretty prominent in this topic. One is that you know trafficking has kidnapped kids overseas. I think that's a big misconception, and. You know, not only does the sensationalism that we see um, across the board fuel and play into that myth, um, but what I like to tell people is that as, as a survivor of trafficking, you know, we grow up in the same communities as all of you. You know, we're too watching those same movies, we're seeing the same things online, uh, we're seeing, you know, things shared on, on social media, and so we also then are picturing stranger danger, we're picturing the kidnapped scenarios and it's important to know that less than 1% of human trafficking is stranger abduction, which means most people, especially here in the US, um, are, are recruited and groomed by somebody that they think they know and trust. Often they meet online or often is posing as a potential romantic partnership. We do see lots of different tactics overseas, job offers, you know, fake job offers, things of that nature. But for the most part, there's a whole like recruitment and grooming process mm -hmm where someone gets to know you, they get to know your hopes and your dreams, they gain your trust, and then they slowly start expanding your boundaries, isolating you from your community and outside sources of information. Yeah. And then that's when we start to see, as those red flags come in for the survivor, um, that's when usually we start to see the, the force and the coercion. So the, the, you know, the violence and the, that component really starts mm -hmm. after that. But for the most part, I don't think people are realizing that, you know, traffickers are sending out 100 DMs a day yeah. um, and hoping that 10 will respond. And out of those 10, one will give their number. Yeah. And that is really their, a lot of their recruitment tactics. Now, obviously, there's all, another kind of myth and misconception is there's really 25 types of human trafficking in America alone, from familial trafficking to labor trafficking, gang exploitation, cantinas, illicit massage parlors. Um, you know, street prostitution, there's all different types of trafficking. And so sometimes I think we also not only picture how people are trafficked, but, but then the type of trafficking they experience. And yeah. what that can do is it can cause us to miss mm -hmm. what exploitation in our very own neighborhoods all the time. And so yeah. helping people really understand what it looks like, that it's not this isolated crime, that it's, yeah. it's not out there, but it's embedded amongst any um, type of exploitation that, that might already be existing in your community. Yeah. Those are, I think, two kind of big misconceptions. Um, we saw a lot more when there was other things going on, Epstein and Wayfair and all of these myths and misconceptions that people were, you know, kidnapped and held in tunnels and put on private islands and all these things. And I think what's important about some of those stories to remember is, you know, Epstein targeted vulnerable teens that came from impoverished kind of marginalized communities. and lured them with money and, and, you know, connection in a sense. And, and it was the mother finding money in a nightstand that was what alerted people. They were going to school every day. They were coming home every single night. And those, those teens were being trafficked. And, and so that's not, I think, an idea that we're picturing that they're coming home, you know, to, to their parents every single night. And so we need to know the signs on what to look for. Yeah, yeah. Can, so, I mean, the way that you're describing this, obviously there are people who, well, I'm assuming, I'm assuming based off of what you're saying, it sounds like there are some people who would be more vulnerable to that process than, than others, but that it can happen anywhere. Is that, is that correct? Is that accurate to yeah. say? Yeah, I mean, trafficking can happen everywhere for sure. There are populations that are more at risk and more vulnerable to trafficking. Um, anytime you see what's known as a high ACEs score, ACEs stands for Adverse Childhood Experiential Study. And there's about 10 questions on an ACEs study. Um, those are often used as sometimes screening tools. Uh, some 10 of those questions, I don't know all of them, I don't have them all memorized off the top of my head, but you know, desensitization to violence in the home, um, growing up in a, in a home where you've been predisposed to um, violence, drugs, gang affiliation, sometimes any uh, connection with the foster community, mm -hmm. LGBTQ community, people of color, um, all different marginalized groups mm -hmm. in, a, in addition to the ACEs scores, what can um, usually use, be used as a screening protocol to help know if someone is more at risk than others. 
you can imagine if someone's you know grown up in a foster care system and in and out of different foster homes that need for connection um, is a lot higher and so those hundred dms that we talked about earlier that a trafficker might send out you might have someone um, respond sooner if they're looking for connection and looking yeah. for that need to be met so it's important to know what marginalized communities exist in your neighborhood. People living in poverty, people struggling with homelessness, single parents, mm -hmm. um, all of, all of diff whatever, all of our communities have different needs, right? And so I, I tell people, if you can close your eyes and picture the most at-risk community groups in your neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, traffickers can too. Yeah. And so they're gonna target those people and offer to have those needs yeah. met and yeah. then as they gain trust, there starts to become strings attached. Yeah. And when those strings aren't, aren't you know, met by the victim, that's when yeah. we see a lot of uh, force and coercion that takes place in that relationship. Yeah. I've heard you talk a lot about um, single mothers, like potentially being a target, obviously, because there can be um, a lot of struggle there, but then also um, like a, that a mother's bond to her child can one can like really manipulate that. So, and I think everyone, unfortunately, like could imagine, I'm sure everyone has like met like a single mother who's struggling because it's, um, it's unfortunately very, very common. What, can you just talk more about like some of like the, the warning signs as far as like, like if we know like a single a single mother and like what that could look like if we're talking about like human trafficking prevention like what can we what does that process look, look like and what can we look out for and how can we help yeah i think a lot of people ask what some of those red flags are and i you know i like i like to tell people unfortunately it's kind of like how do you set how do you um how do you spot i an alcoholic, mm -hmm. right? Like it's not always going to be if someone's in the grocery store and has a bottle yeah. of wine. Oh my gosh, they're an alcoholic, right? Like yeah. I hope not. I'd be getting a lot of um, <laughs> lifted eyebrows. But what happens is usually when you're in proximity with people, mm -hmm. you do start to notice small, subtle clues that might indicate exploitation is taking place. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, similarly with any forms of abuse, whether it's child abuse or domestic violence. Mm -hmm. um, usually it's people in relationship with those individuals, teachers, counselors, coworkers, friends and family that are going to start to notice something's off. Mm -hmm. And so it's not, you know, one thing that you might see in a grocery store on the side of a road that you're going to be able to spot trafficking. Yeah. It's, it's not always that overt. Yeah. Um, so some of the signs that we encourage people, if you are in proximity with someone that may be being targeted, yeah. groomed or exploited, are any signs, I try to keep it really simple, almost maybe too simple, but I like to use the, the equation abuse plus money, mm -hmm. which should cause you to, to get in touch with the hotline, the National Human Trafficking Hotline, or the task force in your community. Let the professionals look into it and investigate. But any signs of abuse, whether it's you're seeing them less and less, they become more isolated, um, they're having a heightened emotional response in conversation, so they're always on edge, yeah. everything's a little bit you know, hey, that's not a normal response for just a conversation. Um, anytime you you see them, uh, any obviously signs of physical abuse, um, a real a real intense bond to their partner that's mm -hmm. starting to become like you know obsessive in a sense. Um, tattoos of initials or names or any reference to money is going to be a warning sign, and then any also what could appear online as like a lavish lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to note that sometimes we'll see people traveling or new clothes or new jewelry or new cars and we mm -hmm. think, well, they must wanna be in it. And instead we need to remind ourselves that um, that is a need oftentimes that's, that a trafficker is trying to meet and it's mm -hmm. a form of abuse. Yeah. It's not sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad yeah. or they wanna be there because they're enjoying, um, you know, in a sense, this lifestyle. But that is a form of abuse because it's a manipulation tactic. It's a way to keep, keep people not only um, controlled, but it also is a recruitment tool for other victims. Yeah. When someone is saying like, oh, you get to travel, and they're like, yeah, you should come with us. Me and my friends go to Miami and we do bottle service. That might be a recruitment tactic. And yeah. so it's important that we know any signs of abuse plus signs of, of monetary possessions are an increase and money should be a red flag that something might be off here. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm seeing them with physical signs of abuse. 
I'm seeing them less and less. They're becoming more isolated, more secretive. Mm -hmm. um, they're traveling a lot. I see that they, there's a new vehicle. Something yeah. might be off. And so I would report that so that the professionals can look into it. Worst case, it's nothing. Everything's, I mean, not worst case, best case. Um, nothing's going on. The professionals have looked into it and, and you can, you know, move on knowing that you at least did your part. Yeah, absolutely. You had mentioned, um, like calling a hotline or a task force. Can you just mention, I don't know, like whatever comes to mind, three things, whatever that people can do if they feel like something's weird, something's not going right here. Can they just Google what the hotline is or what their local task force? Yeah, that's going to be the quickest way you're probably not going to remember the hotline if i share it right now um, <laughs> yeah. you know obviously we know it by heart because we've been in the work so long but if you google human trafficking hotline it'll pop right up okay. or if you google your city name and task the word task force or trafficking yeah. task force most communities have a localized task force now um, that you should be able to get in touch with with a local group and i think sometimes people get nervous to call or they get nervous to mm -hmm. to share a red flag they're seeing like well what if i'm wrong what yeah. if it's nothing we tell people, let the professionals figure that out. That's yeah. it's not necessarily, that's not something you need to worry about. If nothing yeah. is wrong, then no one will know that a professional looked into it and that you made, you know, an anonymous tip or reported yeah. something that looked suspicious. So um, don't worry about being wrong. If you're wrong, then nothing will happen and everyone can go about their day and you can at least feel good knowing that you may have made a difference if something was wrong and someone was being targeted or exploited. Yeah. And I think a lot of people like they also feel weird about calling and I think some people wonder like well will like is it effective like are these organizations effective and you're saying yes call them like if there is a problem they they can handle it and it'll it'll yeah yeah local task forces maybe that that might be a phrase for some people that they don't know what that is a localized task force is a group of community members that work within the anti-trafficking space. So they're usually local nonprofits. They might have a, a shelter or a safe home that offers emergency services. So they know how to respond to crisis. Um, they're, they're often open, you know, 24 hours sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. Local law enforcement is on the task force, prosecutors, mm -hmm. judges, peer advocates. So it, it's a group of people that come together that know about trafficking in the area. They know what type of trafficking is most prominent in your community. They're yeah. resourced to immediately respond. They know how to respond. They've got training mm -hmm. in it. So I always say a local task force is a great thing to great. figure out who, who is your local task force? What is that number? How can you report to them? Because yeah. they're going to know so much about your area and they've um, undergone the training and the cert certification to be able to respond to crisis awesome. um, and know how to investigate. So I say anytime you see a red flag, identify your local task force and make a okay. call. That's great. That's awesome. Um, well, that would not be awesome, but I know I want people to leave this feeling equipped, like, you know, what, you know, what can be done. Is, is there anything else um, that you would want people watching? Because there, the women, I mean, I know a lot of women who are watching. I'm sure some men are watching as well, but the, the women I know who are watching, they have the biggest heart. They're like, I will do literally anything. Is there anything else that you can think of that would be helpful in the, in the, in the form of like prevention? And then I want to talk back about um, the survivor work that you're doing through Elevate Academy. Yeah, you have, I mean, Trades of Hope, you guys are such great, an <laughs> army of people that exist all around the country that really are concerned about justice and, yeah. and empowering women, especially to come out of trauma and come out of, you know, circumstances that might be you know, setting them back and some of their life goals. And so yeah. I would say that you guys are a prime example of how everyone can do something mm -hmm. and everybody can use their skill set and their gifting and, and their, you know, profession in a way that can make a difference in the lives of, of marginalized communities across the country. And so we have a, a online course called Find Your Lane. And with that, we, we help people figure out what it is that they're good at. Maybe it is prevention and it's talking, mm -hmm. you know, minimally just talking to your kids, not only your mm -hmm. daughters about safety, but talking to our young men about how you're going to be, you know, raised in a, in a culture mm -hmm. where hypersexualization and, and purchasing women and objectifying women can be so prominent. Mm -hmm. So it's like prevention for our kids, mm -hmm. but then there's mm -hmm. also intervention and how do we get involved with a local safe home or a local job readiness program? Yeah. How do we advocate for policy? How are we voting in our communities? What, mm -hmm. what are some of the laws 
that your state might be lacking? How do you figure that out? Um, I know I saw Lauren Hirsch join a little bit ago. She leads World We, World Without Exploitation. Their whole organization is all around policy work, um, demand reduction. How do we help um, young men and, and potential those that are you know, buying and creating this demand for, for people sold? Um, and then there's also restoration services, like how do we support this job readiness programs like Elevate and more? So there's so many ways you can get involved, whether it's using your profession and, and helping make, make a difference by contributing, whether it's learning about the red flags and sharing from stats and data and images from experts, not just influencers. Yeah. Um, how can we know what the real truth is about trafficking so we're not spreading misinformation and fueling that sensationalism? Um, all the way to just getting the tools to talk to your kids about how to keep your kids safe. You know, kids, from elementary to middle to high school, those recruitment tactics are very different based on age. And so depending on how old your child is, you might wanna learn what some of those recruitment tactics are by any type of predator. It might not just be a trafficker, but we all wanna keep our kids yeah. safe. So learning the signs, talking to your kids or using your circle of influence, using your vote. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, learning who your local safe homes or local anti-trafficking groups are, volunteering. There's so many ways that we can all do something. And, yeah. Whether it's joining Trades of Hope and getting your necklaces out and <laughs> yes. pushing in a dollar for everything you sell is going to go to fight trafficking efforts. You know, it's, we all can use what we're doing right now to make yeah. a difference um, in, our, in our communities. That's why I really love, like, our partnership is because I feel like we're coming at this issue from so many different sides with different backgrounds. You know, at Trades of Hope, Gretchen and I, like, our backgrounds isn't, in human trafficking like we really started trades of hope because we just knew the the vulnerabilities that women and children and men are experiencing just because they're stuck in cycles of poverty and you even mentioned like communities um communities that are underserved like they are a huge target to being trafficked and that's true like across the world it's just when someone is in a situation of of, of they were either born into or find themselves into a situation of desperation and and like they they don't see a way out like they can be coerced into so so manipulated into so so much and um I, so that's why at trace hope we really focus on creating jobs for women globally so that it lowers their vulnerability to being trafficked their children being trafficked and then we have a lot of pieces like the elevate necklace actually that are made by survivors of human trafficking um, in East Asia. So even supporting then like job opportunities after, um, as they're just they're just trying to start like, like normal life. Like one of the women who make this necklace, she was like, for the first time I can tell people what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. um, and that <laughs> makes me wanna cry every time. Um, and and then with Elevate Academy, I, I, I don't, I, can you just speak more to like, the maybe even like the mental or emotional ways that talking about, you know, professional development, like how does that help with like the healing process? Like you're equipping them with knowledge and, and things like that, but how does that, yeah, how does that help them with like their self-discovery and their healing journey? Yes, yes, absolutely. I think, you know, when people are being trafficked, they, they're, you know, they're used for one thing. They don't know what their gifts are. There's definitely not a strengths-based approach from traffickers. You know, you're often told you're stupid, you can't do anything, you're not good at this, um, no one's gonna love you, no one's gonna give you a chance. And you know, you're, you're, you're beat down emotionally, physically, um, mentally all the time. And so getting into a place where you get to, one, explore who you really are. Like, what am I really good at? And getting those classes and taking the you know the the assessments and learning like i'm really good at photography and i'm creative and i love projects or learning i love spreadsheets and i'm great at data and i love a scheduled nine to five and you know figuring out where you really thrive and shine can feel so empowering to know you know i'm not dumb i do know how to do this or i am really creative and and so to have all of your identity stifled and shut down for so long it's really an incredible journey to watch people come alive and learning yeah. who they really are and getting excited about who they are and and what they're good at and then creating a roadmap on how they're going to use that to find you know true freedom to find economic we always say poverty isn't freedom poverty is not freedom we can help you know get people out of trafficking all day long but if we're putting them right back 
into poverty, it's still, it's not freedom. And so figuring out what are careers that you're going to really love, that you're going to thrive, that it's going to, you're going to find passion and purpose and be able to support you and your family. You know, that's the goal with Elevate. And so it's, it's a healing journey for not only them to figure out who they are. Um, yay, Angela's like, Elevate changed my life. Um, but it, it's one of the things that's also helps them to get really excited about a future because you can, you can feel really scared about like, how do I live this whole world of normalcy yeah. that I haven't been in a part of for a really long time. And yeah. Elevate not only creates community where they get to, you know, meet other survivors and, and know they're not alone in those, those journeys and, mm -hmm. and the struggles that will come up as you try to figure out who you are and build. Um, so you get to have this camaraderie and community, yeah. but then you also get really excited about building the future that you, you really always wanted. Yeah. And we all, we often tell women when we're working crisis response calls or we're helping and assisting on undercover operations, we'll ask them, what is your trafficker promising you that has made you risk your life? And how can we help you get there without them? How can we help you attain all your dreams and all your goals yeah. of home ownership or entrepreneurship or business ownership? Um, without them because there's there's so many ways that we can all come together and know that those hopes and dreams are in their heart for a reason mm -hmm. and that they can uh they can attain those and and so it's just it's really empowering and healing i think for people to realize i can do this i am gifted i have the skills i have the tools i have the community i now have the network mm -hmm. um to really go after you know what it is that my heart has always longed for yeah. so that's been i think really healing and and watching people get involved um, in different areas in their community to know, like, you know, I went on another, you know, to have other survivors say, I did my first undercover op and I met eight women that night and I was able to share with them my exit journey. And so for them to feel like your voice matters, your story yeah. matters, everything you lived through wasn't for nothing. Yeah. You can help other people, you know, move forward and overcome. You just, you see people light up and really find passion and purpose with their future yeah. when there was probably a point in their life when they had lost all hope yeah. that there would be a future in store for them. Um, so not only do you, does it lead to career readiness and economic empowerment, but you do see a lot of that healing that takes place just from the journey of exploration. Wow. Oh my gosh. I don't even know. I can't even fully process all of that. It's so beautiful and incredible. And um, I'm just, I just know that there, there are people watching thinking like, okay, like how can I play like such a small part in this and definitely check out Elevate Academy. Um, if you're wanting to shop ethically made accessories for yourself or other people, $1 of every order, you buy anything on the Trades of Oak website, um, now through the 15th, a dollar will go um, to Elevate Academy. And then we have our Elevate necklace, which $10 of every single necklace <laughs> goes to Elevate Academy. Um, I want to be super mindful of your time, Rebecca, because I know you've had a very full day. But is there anything else you would want, um, knowing that you have a captive audience of people who are really, who really desire to advocate and stand with um, uh, survivors and, and help prevent uh, human trafficking as well. Anything else you would want them to know or anything you want to say? I mean, I just I really appreciate obviously our, our partnership and yes, continue to shop and buy the necklace and buy any of your ethically made accessories. If you guys want to learn more about trafficking, we have lots of great resources on our website, um, documentaries, books you can read, e-courses you can take, follow us on social, reshare our content. Um, and then obviously any, we always need monthly partners, 19 bucks a month with a one year commitment really helps us to keep our doors open. So joining us as a monthly partner, I send out special emails every quarter to our monthly partners, giving them insight and tips and resources. So, um, and again, the find your lane course, it just helps you to figure out all the different ways that you can fight trafficking. I think people are so can be overwhelmed with like, oh my gosh, where do I begin? It feels like such this, this big you know, how do you eat an elephant type of yeah. thing. And so we encourage people, go take the find your lane. We break it down into nine easy to understand categories. Um, we even have a kind of a funny quiz that you can take of like, what personality do you have and what does it match with one of those nine lanes? Um, so you can know, you know, how do I learn about policy? I am interested in politics and what my laws are and how to vote well and, and what, you know, bills are coming up in that, you know, that state's session that we can vote on and you know there's so many things that we all are passionate about so 
learn about those nine lanes and, and get involved in the lane that just in the lane you're passionate about. You don't have to do it all. You don't have to eat the whole elephant. We just to get involved in the one you are passionate about and, and learn about it and, and join us in our activism and advocacy and yeah, become a monthly partner and get to know your local safe homes, or your mm -hmm. local survivor led orgs, mm -hmm. buy a necklace. Mm -hmm. We can do so many things. We put out different tips on how to keep your kids safe. I just saw some comments. We have um, different tips on how to get, how to get the curriculum education curriculum in schools. We have that on your Find Your Lane course. And we give resources for every lane. So if it is um, prevention education, we have links on that lane of all different curriculums that exist, tips on how to get it into your local um, high school, whether it's an assembly or an actual curriculum with a teacher. So we have we just have so much content. We'd love for you to, to take the course and learn about all those different ways that you can be a part in something that you're passionate about. So good. You, you You've given, they have so many options. We have so many options and it really is such an honor um, to partner with you over the last few years, continue to um, coming up with new and creative ways to continue to do so. It's really such an honor. It's just an honor to know you. I'm excited to see you um, in a yes. couple of weeks. That will be very fun. And just, oh, more people are saying they're looking forward to seeing you in a yeah. couple of weeks. Um, we'll be on code. Yeah, this is going to be. Keep partnering with Trades of Hope, you guys, because not only do you guys and all of, Everyone that's a part of your team obviously helps so much with our sponsorships and donations, but you guys make an incredible amount of donations for our welcome boxes and our graduation boxes every single semester. Um, just for those of you, you know, tuning in so you know, every time a, co a semester starts, every survivor gets a welcome box and includes some textbooks, and it includes lots of goodies from Traits of Hope, um, journals, and um, bracelets and all different sorts of goodies that you're able to donate actual, you know, tangible accessories for, for students. And at the end, when survivors graduate, they're mailed an actual graduation cap with a tassel and we get to do a graduation ceremony and um, we get to put more of your tangible, ethically made accessories in those too. So we're just so grateful that you're able to, to make those donations and send us boxes of goodies because we know that you have such great people that are out there. Um, pushing the message of traits of hope too. So we're just really grateful for, for all that you guys are doing for us too. Oh, you're so, so kind. It's so mutual. Honestly, the biggest, the biggest honor ever. So, and thank you so much for your time here this evening after such a long day. You, this is like the second time you've made time for us on human trafficking awareness day, which is probably one of your busiest, busiest days. So thank all you good. so much. <laughs> and I tell you this every time I see you, but I have already been shopping for a cute outfit because elizabeth for those of you know that know elizabeth steps elizabeth's fashion is on point and so i always feel this pressure of like oh my gosh i'm going to a trades of hope event i've got to find a cute outfit you always look amazing you look amazing i i actually just um ordered some clothes to rent for the event oh, so we're going you know oh, we're stepping out so friendly we're renting a little bit yeah 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 <laughs> Noted. I need to step my game up. I got it. I'll you know, ready. so many important conversations being had. You know, I just love being uh, a mission-minded woman among other mission-minded women. Actually, in Trades Hope meetings, we'll be talking about something like really important and like kind of heavy, and then I'll just be like, "Oh my gosh, I love your nails!" And it's just fun changing <laughs> the world with other women. <laughs> I love it. Yes, it makes it fun though, and you can be around other people that that equally love fun things, but want to use their life for, for advocacy and activism and making the world better. It, it's easier to go, you know, when you're around other people that are like-minded, it's, it's what makes us continue to keep going. So, you know, we're around yes. friends that love and appreciate all the same things from ethically made sources to empowering women to really great nails. Then. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, <laughs> I agree completely. Um, well, thank you so much, friends. Um, I appreciate your time. Appreciate everyone who joined us. This was such a strong crowd for the whole like the whole time we've been here. Thank you to everyone who's been watching. Yes. Um, check out um, Elevate Academy. Check out the Elevate necklace. Um, shop by the fifteenth if you're gonna shop, so that a dollar goes back to Elevate Academy. And um, we'll see you soon, Rebecca. Yes, we'll see you guys. Thank you so Bye. much for having me. Bye, Anytime. <laughs>